Hi there! I know I haven't been making a lot of videos lately or streaming, and the truth of the matter is I'm kind of burnt out on AI technology at the moment. I know a lot of you are going to be like, Kyle, how can you say that? Look at all the amazing things that are happening. Just, just look, look, there's just so much AI to be had. And I understand it's exciting, right? But I can only sustain so much excitement for so long without getting, I don't know, too burnt out on doing the same thing over and over again. So that's kind of the reason why I've been a little bit on mute leaving you guys on red. Apologies on that. Also been doing other things. I wrote an article on Medium. I've been taking some classes in person. Uh, I made this uh, nice little device in the soldering class. And so if I turn this on, it can, uh, you know, turn the light on and make it go in a circle, which is pretty cool. So I've been, as the kids say, touching grass, I guess, a bit more. And it feels good, man, I think. I think it feels really good to uh, touch the grass. Also, focus more on my job and things like that. But I just wanted to make this to let you guys know I haven't completely forgotten about y'all. I have, I have YouTube in the back of my mind. And with any creative hobby, there are periods of highs and lows and just periods of feeling really motivated and not so motivated to make content. And I have to admit that artificial intelligence lately has just been all over the place so much in the news, on YouTube, social media, and even being talked about at my job so much to the point that I'm getting kind of tired of hearing it so much. And I've been greatly appreciating the human connection, connections, I should say, that I have in my life a lot more. But I do have some news, AI news to report. I did go to Cerebra Systems Supernova event in San Francisco. I didn't go for the whole thing. I only went for a couple of hours. But I did go see their CEO talk. I got to hear about the latest innovations that they are developing, specifically with speeding up AI. So if you don't know Cerebrus, they have created this wafer chip that makes AI models go blisteringly fast. And we're talking token speeds of like 1,500 to 2,000 tokens per second. And even making reasoning models like the ones from OpenAI and Meta, those kinds of companies, making those reasoning models faster. Because if you prompt the reasoning models on the web interface for like OpenAI or Google or Anthropic, you do notice that they have to take some time to respond and come up with an answer. And Cerebris has sped up the process by essentially building a really, really big chip that allows you to store the model weights close to I believe the memory on the computer. I'm not a really technical computer science hardware kind of guy, so I apologize if that's a inadequate description of it. But from what I understood, they put the model weights closer to the memory on the board, and so therefore you can get those really fast speed ups. So I thought it was pretty cool, and I met some pretty interesting people at the event. I got to network a bit, and it's at events like these where you're surrounded by so many individuals who are, are interested in the development and the progress of artificial intelligence. And everyone's kind of giving their opinion as to what is going to happen. And I've been watching so many different kinds of videos lately in terms of people like Eric Schmidt, the former Google CEO. I've been seeing Sam Altman go travel to Washington, D.C. And now he's also in... Saudi Arabia with the American president as well as Elon Musk. And I get the sense, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but I get the sense that no one really knows the timeline of how everything is going to go. Everyone's throwing out different years, different dates, different predictions. And these are people who are heavily entrenched in the field. I'm talking about people like, for example, Dario Amade 
and Mark Zuckerberg and the CEO, other CEOs of these companies saying, oh, we're, we're going to have AI write X percent of the code by the end of 2025. I know 2025 was supposed to be the year of the agents. I mean, it's not even halfway over, so I'm not writing it off completely. But I sometimes have to remember that I'm living in the Silicon Valley. I'm from San Francisco. I go up to San Francisco pretty often, like at least once or twice a week. And I have to remember I'm in this bubble, right? This space where we are at the epicenter of where the the labs are, where the innovations are happening in America at least. I'm not I'm not counting like deep sea in China, but you know what I mean. Now I have a very limited perspective as an individual and I acknowledge that and I'm also not involved with a startup or a large company that's actively working on these problems. But it's surprising to me at a place, for example, at NASA where I'm currently at, how little adoption there has been of large language models, even in 2025, right? We're nearly three years since the release of chat GPT originally in November, 2022. And we still have people at NASA who don't really know how to prompt LLMs or they know what chat GPT is, but they're not really using it in their work. And there are some rules as to why that's the case. Like there are actual regulations at NASA that prevent the, usage of those tools for certain cases. I still think that it's going to be monumentous and of course is going to set the agenda for the coming years. But I think there comes a point where I hit this sort of saturation of interest where there's just so many different tools. You have agents, you have the large language models, you have the reasoners, the non-reasoners. There's just so many different kinds of tools out there that I can only realistically indulge in a handful of them. And I still feel like I am way in over my head trying to understand all of these different tools and trying to use every single one that comes out. So with that, that basically concludes this video. I wanted to explain why I am feeling a little bit burnt out with making the type of AI content that I have been over the past half year or so. And that while I don't plan to completely stop making that content, uh, I just want you to understand that I still have thoughts about it. I still go to AI events. I still am trying to keep up with the latest AI news. I just may not have the time to put it into a video format. And I want to be able to give myself permission to make content just like this, where it's as simple as just me talking into the camera with a microphone in front of my green screen and being okay with that as the creator. Because... I always have to remember that YouTube is going to be a hobby for me. It's always been a hobby for the past seven years. And I am grateful for all the support and viewership I've received over the lifetime of this channel. But as long as it's my hobby, I need to be able to give myself permission to step away from it and say, I need a break and I want to be able to just do things differently and do other things like, make these cool circuits or take a class in 3D printing or laser cutting, uh, which I will be doing in the coming weeks, which I'm really excited for because I'm someone who just likes to learn. I like to be able to stretch my brain out in different dimensions. And I also like to make videos. I like to film. I like to talk into microphones. I like to edit stuff on my computer, but I'm only human, right? And I only have so many hours every day to do all this and I still have a job that I do at NASA. So I want to be able to explain this all to you and hopefully you guys can understand that I don't ever plan on leaving YouTube completely. I just will take time now and then to just touch grass as they say. So thank you for your understanding. Thank you for your viewership. I really appreciate all the support I've received on this channel and I will see you next time in the next video or the next live stream. So till then, take it easy, everyone.